artists, welcome to your slab painting class. In front of you, you should have your canvas with your sketch, a cup of water, a large brush, a small brush, a paper towel. You are also provided wax paper. You do not have to pour your colors out onto your wax paper right now. It is used for mixing later, so if you wanted to use to mix on, you absolutely can. But for your colors for the sloth painting class, you should have brown, green, purple, yellow, red, light blue, and then your black and your white. If you do not have all those materials, not a problem. Just push pause on the video and come back whenever you're ready. The first thing we're going to do in our sloth painting class is take our two brushes and dip them into our cup of water and just kind of swirl them around. I usually hold my cup with one hand and swirl my two brushes with my other hand. Once I'm done, I'm going to gently pat my two brushes onto my paper towel. You never want to go straight from washing to painting on your canvas unless you want a really watery or drippy look. But for this one, we're always going to make sure that we wash and then dry before we start painting on our sloth canvas. Step one is taking your small brush, so not your big brush, but your small brush and your white paint. You're just going to put a little bit of white paint onto your small brush. If you feel like it's dripping off of your small brush, just kind of pat some off onto your paper towel. You don't want too much on there. And we're going to go inside this area of the face and paint it white. We're going to do our best to avoid the nose and the mouth. Let me show you how. So I'm just going to start on the inside of this line. I'm going to outline it first. And then I'll go in there and paint inside of it. I just want to create a nice line so I know where to stop with the white. Even though our canvas is white, this white's going to be a little bit brighter, so you'll be able to tell the difference. So I went around this odd shape, and I'm just going to go around this triangle shaped nose and above the mouth and below the mouth. So I went on the inside, kind of outlined that fun shape, and then I went on the outside of the nose and on the outside of the mouth. Once you're done, you can go back to more white paint, maybe tap some off on there so you don't have too much. And again, use your small brush, but I'm gonna fill in all this area of the face. If you get pencil smudges, you can always just kind of sweep it onto your brush and wipe it off onto your paper towel. Make sure you don't have any bumps. All the paint is nice and smooth. If you get some on the pencil line, it's okay. We'll paint on top of it later. Just wanna make sure everything looks nice and clean. Nice and smooth, no bumps. So, and once you're done, you can wash and dry your small brush. If you're still working on step one, not a problem. But once you are done, you can move on to step two. And step two is gonna be our light blue background. For this step, if you wanted to use your big brush and get a scoop of blue out and put it onto your wax paper, wash and dry your brush and get a scoop of white out and put it onto your wax paper, you can use that as a way to kind of going back and forth. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So again, if you wanted to go ahead and take a scoop out of blue, scoop out of white. Be sure to wash and dry your brush between each scoop. What you're going to do is add a little bit of blue and a little bit of white on your big brush at the same time. So once you've taken a scoop of each and put them onto your wax paper, you can use your big brush 
put a little bit of blue and a little bit of white on your big brush at the same time. And then I'm going to start outlining on the bottom area. of my sloth. So kind of underneath the belly area. And again, a scoop of blue, a scoop of white, and all you're doing is just kind of tapping your finger a little bit in the blue, a little bit in the white at the same time. Again, nice, long, smooth lines. And be sure you're washing and drying between each color change. So once you put blue, you wash and dry, once you put what white, wash and dry, and then you can have a little bit of both on your brush at the same time. Once you're done, you can go back for more blue and more white on your wax paper. And I'm gonna go above this arm right here. Just a little bit of paint on my brush. I'm gonna go above the head. Again, nice, long, smooth lines with your big brush. It's kind of like a nice round rainbow kind of curve. Little bit of blue, a little bit of white, same thing. I'm going to continue on to the right side. And then to the left of this arm, to the right of this arm, above the belly, and just to the left of this line. This is his two legs right here, so you do not want to paint inside this space. We're just kind of outlining around the sky. And then once you're done, you can do a little bit of blue, a little bit of white. And you can go above this line the best that you can and below that pencil line. If you accidentally paint on top of it, not a big deal. We'll find it later. This is kind of the vine that he'll be um, swinging on later. We'll go below this line as well. And be sure your paint's nice and smooth. You want you don't want any big bumps. It'll take forever to dry. But there's your outline. And this outline helps us kind of guide ourselves on where the sky area is. So once you're done with your outline, you can go back to more blue, back to more white. And just in an up and down motion, paint all this backspace underneath this area, so all this space is gonna be covered with blue and white, so this whole bottom part. And if you need to go back for more blue and more white, you can wash and dry your brush, get a scoop of blue, wash and dry, get a scoop of white, wash and dry, and continue to paint the background. We'll also be painting the four sides of our canvas as well. But for now, we're just gonna concentrate on the front area of our canvas. Again, up and down, nice and smooth. If you're still working on your outline, still not a problem, take your time. The next area I'm gonna do with my blue and white is right here. It's almost kind of like that C shape right here. This will be my next step, and that'll be my next step. So these one, two, three areas will be next. So blue and white. Again, painting in an up and down motion. I don't want to paint on the sloth's arm. avoid that area where the vine is hanging. just kind of painting in an up and down motion. 
making sure one, two, three, four areas are painted with the blue and white. And last part of the sky is up here. And again, a little bit of blue, a little bit of white. And painting that up and down motion, avoid where the vine is hanging. over here take your time with these one two three four five areas again do not paint where the legs are but once you're done you can slowly just kind of lift up your canvas and paint the four sides again with blue and white and your big brush the bottom part, I'm just going side to side. The top part, I'll go side to side. And then the left and the right part, I'll go up and down with my brush. Just very carefully lift it up. space for the sky nice light blue All right. very carefully I'm gonna lift up my canvas and not touch the bottom part because it's still kind of wet if there's a better way that you can do it to not touch the paint that's not a problem probably gonna get a little bit of paint on your hands but it comes off pretty easily with soap and water There's one, two, and three, and then on the right side will be next. Move this down just a little bit. If you get some on the sloth, not a problem. We're going to go over with brown, and that'll cover it up really easily. There's my four sides. You can always go back and touch things up. Make sure you don't have any white peeking through. You want it to look nice and clean in the background. There you go, nice and clean. And take your time with this step. No rush, make sure all the four sides are done as well. You're welcome to push pause on this video if you're still working on it. But once you're done, you can go ahead and wash and dry both brushes if they still have blue and white on them or just your big brush. Get your brush nice and clean. Whenever you're ready for it, our next step will be painting our sloth brown. All right, whenever you're ready, you can take your small brush and your brown paint, and you don't have to pour it out. You're just dipping your small brush in your brown paint. If it looks like there's too much on there, just tap some off onto your paper towel. You do want to avoid any spots of blue that are still shiny and wet. So I'm going to make sure whenever I outline around my sloth, I don't 
um, go near the wet shiny blue spots until they're a little bit more dry. So for now I'm just going to be working on the inside area with my small brush and my brown paint and I want to make sure I am outlining again. So I'll go pretty much over my pencil line with my brown around this funny shape so I know this is where I'm going to stop with my brown paint later on. And I'm just dragging my small brush until it's out of paint or doesn't have that much paint on it. I can come in from the other side too. I'm gonna drag it so I have nice, long, smooth lines and not scratchy, short ones. Drag it. I'm pretty much, again, going over the pencil line just a little bit. All down here, all the way around. So again, I'm going around that funny shape with my small brush and my brown paint. Avoiding these wet blue areas for just a moment while they dry. Once I'm done, I'm gonna even go around this eye shape. So I know later on I'm gonna paint that a different color. One and two. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna start outlining down here where I kind of started off before with my blue because it's gonna be the most dry. But I'm gonna make sure I don't see any white peeking through. So I'm just going over my pencil line a little bit so that it goes from blue to brown. And then I'm going to start outlining here. Going where the hand area is. above the arm. More small brush, more brown paint. Again, this kind of rainbowy curved shape of the head. And I'm just gonna follow that by dragging my brush all the way around. Like so. And then I'm gonna go to the left, to the right of the arm the belly area and just to the left right here. I don't want to go in the inside area, but just to the left of the leg right here. So this is going to be your outline for your sloth. Once you're done, you can wash and dry your small brush. Just kind of put it off to the side. But again, if you're working on the blue, if you're working in the brown, no rush. The next step is going to be painting the body and the head, but avoiding this area of the face and avoiding the eyes. You can use your big brush for bigger areas. You can use your small brush to get into those smaller areas. But all we're gonna do right now is start painting inside the body and around the face area. Do your best to kind of stay within the lines. For the body, I'm gonna kind of just go side to side for the kind of the way his fur might be going. So it's kind of, he's kind of on his side. So I'm gonna be painting side to side in this area. You want to cover the whole thing in brown. I'm again big brush, brown paint, doing my best to stay within the lines. You don't want to go outside of the lines. Nice long brush movements left to right. And make sure this edge is nice and clean too. You can even outline this right here. It's a little cleaner. So brown, if you want to kind of get the edges a little bit, come down and work my way all the way up, moving my brush side to side. Go all the way up to 
kind of the face area now, get a little bit closer. Again, big brush side to side, nice and smooth. the edges by just kind of coming down go all the way up all right then once you're done with the body area and going side to side you can start working on the legs and the arms I'm gonna start kind of moving my big brush in an up and down motion so now I'm gonna start be with my big brush going in an up and down motion Same with this one. It's kind of going in the direction of the arm and the fur. And same with this arm. I'm just going to be going in the motion or the direction of the arm. Again, be very careful. Stay inside your outline. Can go up to the face just be super careful to stay outside that white area if you accidentally get some brown in there you can let the brown uh, dry and then go back over it with white to kind of clean it up can go back to his can clean it up I don't have any white spots. Perfect. And then I can start kind of moving in the face area. Be very careful. Again, you can use your small brush in smaller areas. So you can kind of go around the eyes with your small brush. Maybe these small little areas right here. Kind of just going to the left and to the right. Almost like a C curve here. And a backward C curve right here. And on the sides, just kind of going up and down, up and down. And the head, you can kind of follow this kind of rainbowy curve. But again, just be very careful, stay out of the face area and stay within the lines. Once I'm done with this brown area, I am gonna give it a minute to dry. Actually, maybe even two minutes, one or two minutes to dry. And I'll go back over the brown with a second coat. With the second coat, you won't be able to see these streaky lines as much. It'll just kind of cover your canvas a little bit better. But be sure to give it some drying time where it's not too shiny. You can go back over it with a second coat and the paint is nice and dry and then you can lay that second layer on top. So again, in a couple minutes, I will go back over my brown with a second coat. So it just looks a little bit more solid. You don't see these streaky lines so much. It gives it a little bit better coverage. Be sure you don't have any bumps. Everything looks nice and smooth. wash my brush for now and just lay it on my paper towel but take your time with your brown if your brown got outside of the 
your line work from earlier, you can always go back and just kind of clean it up with your small brush and your brown paint and outline it to get it a little bit cleaner. Excuse me. Give mine one more minute. It's still a little bit shiny here and there. I'll go over it with another coat. After we're done with our second coat of brown, we will start with our small brush and our green paint, and we'll start kind of going over the vine and other kind of leafy areas around our, our sloth. So that'll be next after our second coat of brown. I'm ready. Again, I'm just kind of going over what I've already done, the same direction, making sure everything is nice and clean. There's definitely a big difference between the first coat and the second coat. Start up here on the legs. On the arms. much going back in the order that I started from. So I hit the, the more drier areas. But again, a huge difference between first coat and second coat. And if you wanted to, at the very end of the class, if you wanted to go back, you can even do a third coat as a touch-up. That's absolutely up to you. So if you feel like you're still seeing a lot of streaky lines, you want it to be a little bit more solid where you can't see the white as much, you can always touch it up at the end of the class when it's really dry. There you go. And 
once you're done with your second coat of brown, you can wash and dry your brushes. And if you're still working on it, not a problem. You're welcome to push pause on the video. outline just a little bit. And wash and dry. Again, if you take your time with this step, you should have your white area for the center of the face. You should have your blue sky including the four sides and then the brown fur. All right, once you're done with those three things, you can take your small brush and your green paint. You don't have to pour it out of your, the cup. You can just Dip your small brush in the green paint. Put a little bit of fuzz on there, excuse me. And I'm gonna be very careful not to touch any of the brown wet paint, but I'm gonna go over this line right here by just dragging my brush from one side to the next. And be very careful not to touch your brown wet paint. I'll do that one more time. So I'm gonna take my small brush and my green paint and I'm gonna give it a second coat of green. Maybe give it about 30 seconds to dry and then go over it again. Once I'm done, there is no other, um, there are no other green lines on your painting, um, excuse me, pencil lines on your painting, but you're gonna start creating some more greenery. The second, um, thing I'm going to have you do with your green is start here in the corner and very slowly just come down at a diagonal. I haven't touched this green line, but if you do a little bit, that's not a problem. So I start at the corner and I come down at the diagonal. I start, I stop right before that green line. And after that green line, you can again give it two coats. I'm gonna create another green line right after this arm right here. And I'm gonna come up. So I'm gonna start the vine and I'll come up into a diagonal. So there's two. So I start at the vine right after the arm area. Give it two coats again. And whenever I'm done with those three green lines, I'm gonna create another line above this arm area. Again, just a little bit of a space coming up, just a little bit like so. Just a little short green line. I'm gonna make another mini green line. Here's kind of like the armpit area. So I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna go up at a little bit of a diagonal, coming right up. So just a little short line again. Armpit area, come down, and just come up just like an inch, inch and a half. You can do two coats on it again. And then this one right here in the corner, I'm gonna make another little mini short line, like so. Once you're done, go ahead and wash and dry your small brush. And with your small brush, you're gonna go into the container that has the black and get a little 
little bit of black, like a dot of black, and put onto your wax paper. Wash and dry really well because there's no more black on it. And then you'll do the same thing with white. A scoop of white and put it onto your wax paper. Really small amounts. So tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of white onto your wax paper. Wash and dry. And then a little bit of green as well. So you have those three. And be sure you're washing and drying your small brush between each scoop. So green, black, and white, little scoops with your small brush should be on your wax paper. Once you're done with those three scoops, we're gonna start filling in our green vines a little bit more. So the first thing I'm gonna do is again, wash and dry my small brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of green and a little bit of black on my small brush tap down on it and I'm gonna just go over this one more time it's gonna make it just a little bit darker so a little bit of green a little bit of black tap it onto your paper towel so you don't have too much on there Good. continue make that line a little bit darker all the way from one side to the next all right once you're done you don't even have to clean your brush. You can go back to a little bit of green and a little bit of black. I would probably do a practice run of this. We're gonna start making leaves. If you wanna do a practice run onto your wax paper or your paper towel so you can kind of practice before you making leaves onto your canvas, you can. But our leaves are almost like football shapes where they're round on the left side, round on the right side, and then they come together as a point. So if you wanna practice that onto your wax paper where you have space or onto your paper towel. Again, all I did was a little bit of green, a little bit of black. My leaf shape comes out that way and that way and see how they come to two points. I'm gonna start making some leaves on this vine right here. So watch and then you're welcome to jump in. So I'm gonna make a leaf shape coming down this way and coming down that way. I'm gonna make the same thing. I'm gonna have it starting from the vine, coming down this way. They kind of, almost like upside down Vs, right? Coming down this way, coming down that way. And there is one at the end. I'm gonna come up a little bit higher and on the line, I'm gonna go to the left and to the right. So again, coming out this way, coming out that way, starting at the vine coming out this way, coming out that way. And then I'm going to come down a little bit further, excuse me, and make this one coming this way and that one coming that way and that way. Sorry, I'm gonna touch up this one really quick. And then this last one, I started on the line, right? So I didn't start at the end, I kind of started on the line a little bit higher up. And then I went to the left and to the right. And once you're done, you can go back to your green and your black and tap some off onto your paper towel if you have too much on there and paint the shapes. And I lost this shape a little bit, so I'm gonna try to get it back. But go ahead and start filling in your, your leaf shapes. A little bit of green, a little bit of black. And then go ahead and fill them in. And if you got too much black on there, you can always go back to more green. Just give it a little bit more time to try. Trying to get this shape back. There we go. And all I'm doing is just filling in those areas. You can go over that vine a little bit. Give that nice greenery. Just kind of hanging down. If you need to grab more scoops of black or green and put it onto your wax paper, go for it. Just be sure to clean between each dip into those little containers so the colors don't mix. Perfect. And I'm gonna do the same thing up here, but instead I'm gonna have my leaves going up. So I'm gonna start at this vine and make it this football shape right here. And then I'm gonna have two on the left, so I'm gonna go up a little bit higher. One shape, 
two shape and then I'll go back and paint it with green and black. So same old, same old, green and black. Tap some off onto your paper towel. Let's go ahead and paint inside those shapes. This one right here is really easy. It's actually just one big leaf. So again, if you wanna go back to your green, back to your black, if you have too much on there, just pat it off onto your paper towel. But this one's going up. So we're gonna have this curve right here and this curve down here meeting up. So again, this is just gonna be one big leaf shape. Okay, I'll clean it up. One big leaf, super easy. And it's with a little bit of green, a little bit of black. You can go back and do a second coat if you need to. This one down here is the same thing. I'm gonna go down with a curve, like almost like a C curve again. Go this way and make sure that they point. And I can fill it in. This one's a little bit tricky, but not too bad. It's gonna be green and black. Tap some off onto your paper towel. I'm gonna come up with just two lines on the left. One, two. And then between the two on the right side, I'm gonna come up like this. So one, two, almost like a Y shape. And between the two, I'm gonna come up and to the right, on the right side. And you don't even have to clean your brush, but give your greenery like a minute or two to dry. But I'm just gonna go into my white, so I, they still have that green and black on it. But I'm gonna go into my white, tap some off onto my paper towel, and I'm gonna be sweeping a little bit of white to show the light that's hitting the greenery. So let me show you how. So white, tap some off onto your paper towel, and maybe a little bit here, a little sweep, a little bit there, a little bit there. Just random, it doesn't have to be just like mine, but white, tap some off on your paper towel. A little bit here. I'm just kind of sweeping, which means I'm like flicking my brush. Mostly on the outside areas, right? Right here. Maybe on the outside area of this one. Like so, just a little bit of white. And if you feel like you put too much white on there, let it dry and then just go over it with your green and black. I do also wanna add a little bit of that on this vine right here, just those sweeps from flicking my brush, like so. Once you're done, you can wash and dry. I'm gonna touch up this area. I think I smeared my hand in it with some blue. Next step is whenever you're ready for it, again, if you're still working on your greenery, take your time. Again, you can pause the video. But the next step is super easy. We're just gonna paint the eyes, the nose, and the mouth black. Nice small brush. You can just dip your small brush into the uh, black uh, container. And we're gonna outline the circle so we have a nice clean shape and we can fill it in. So outline and fill in, and then outline, and fill in. Then same thing with the nose. Don't go onto the mouth just yet. Don't go onto the mouth just yet. So the nose is next, right? And then outline. The 
and fill in the triangle shape. For the mouth area, again, you're using your small brush, but remember the harder that you push, the thicker the line becomes. So you just wanna be on the tippy toes of your small brush. Hold your brush where the gold is too, so you have good control for this line work. You don't wanna be holding your brush way back where it gets more wobbly. So you just wanna follow from one side, just on the tippy toes, all the way to the other side. At this time, too, if you feel like you wanted to go back and give your sloth another coat of brown now that it's more dry, you can do that as well. But that is definitely artist choice. Just be careful of any other wet paints. Once you're done with those steps, we are gonna start jumping into our flowers. Our flowers, um, we are gonna be laying some t on top of the greenery, so you wanna make sure everything is nice and dry underneath it. We are only gonna be using our small brush, so be sure it's nice and clean, and you're washing your brush between each kind of color change. We are gonna start with our yellow flowers first. So small brush, yellow, paint, you don't have to pour it out. We're just kind of putting our small brush in the yellow paint. Make sure it's not dripping off. Be sure you're holding it where the gold is again so you have good control. I'm gonna start up here and make my first yellow flower. And super easy, all I'm gonna do is make a dot where the center of my flower is. And then I'm gonna just make circles around it for the petals, so I have one petal there one petal there, one petal here, and one petal here. So this one just has four. Petals, so I just made a dot in the middle and I kind of worked around it. And again, you can go back and give it another coat if you feel like you see too much of that blue in the background. I'm gonna make another flower, same way down here with my yellow. I'm gonna make a dot right here, so above that leaf area, and I'm just gonna make circles around it again. Circle right here for the petal. Circle right here. Circle right here. And a circle right there. So the dot in the middle, and just make circles all the way around. gonna be another flower over here be sure the green is nice and dry again small brush yellow paint and make a dot just a little bit higher than the leaf again one two three and four I'm gonna keep going with our yellow flowers there's another one down here make a dot it's really low. Ooh, let me scoot it up so you can see it a little bit. Really low down here. You can only see the top one, the one to the left, and the one to the right. So I made a dot. Made a circle to the left, above it, and then to the right. I'm gonna make another flower between like the head and the arm. I'm gonna make a yellow dot on the vine. This one's gonna be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna have five circles. So I made a yellow dot. One, two, three, four, and five. And just be sure you can see those circles really well. Go back over them and kind of touch them up. And there's one last yellow one right here. It's 
kind of where the feet and the vine meet. I'm going to make a yellow dot. And you can only see the one down here, the one to the left, and then the one to the right. And just go back and make sure you can see those circles. I'm going to even go back and give those yellow flowers another coat. So maybe give them a couple minutes to dry and then start where you began because those are going to be your drier ones. And you can go back and make another coat of yellow. Make sure you can see those nice circles by just having your brush go nice and round. Perfect. I think my next one was down here, right? Circle, circle. You want to do three coats you can just be sure to give it a minute or two to dry between each coat this yellow is still wet i might go back later on and give it another coat one too so make sure you give yours a good amount of drying time and then you can go back and make those circles and then when you're done with your yellow you can wash and dry all right once you're done you can jump to your red flowers. I'm going to use my small brush again. I have a red flower right here underneath the vine. I'm just going to make a dot right underneath the vine. And it looks like I can just see three red circles. So there's one, or excuse me, three red petals. Two and three. A circle for each one. Looks like there's one down here by the leaf. Let me move, sorry, one right there by the leaf. And then make a circle right here, make a circle right here. Looks like this one you can see four of them. Circle right here, circle right there. I'm just going all the way around. Looks like we have one more red one up here to the right of a sleeve up here make a dot looks like you can see one circle right here one right here and one right there once you're done with red you don't have to clean your brush because we're going to move on to pink which is red and a white together actually if you are um, wanting to take a scoop of white out, which is probably our, our best bet. So if, if you are done with your red, go ahead and wash and dry your brush because I think we're gonna go ahead and go into our white and get a scoop of white and put onto our wax paper. So once red is done, clean your brush really well, get a scoop of white, find a nice area in your wax paper, then wash and dry, get a scoop of red. You can just flop it right on top of that a white, so a scoop of white, wash and dry, scoop of red, and then you can just kind of mix the two. And if you want your pink to be lighter, you can add more white. If you want your pink to be darker, you can add more red. So pink and white, excuse me, red and white, mix it with your small brush to get a nice pink. So finish up your yellow, finish up your red, scoop of white, scoop of red, mix it with your small brush, wipe off the sides once you're done so you don't have big chunks of paint on there. With our pink flowers, we're gonna move our brushes a little bit differently. We're just gonna move them round and round, almost like a lollipop. So down here on top of this line right here, I'm just gonna go on top of it a little bit, go round and round. This one too, go round and round. The top here too, go round and round. Keep them nice and mini. You don't, you don't want them to be big, smaller than a penny. Over here, go round and round.
I do have another one up here with my pink. I'm just gonna go round and round. There's just one right here. Perfect. I am gonna add a little bit of white on top of those pink flowers. So I'm just gonna wipe off my brush onto my paper towel. You don't have to wash it. I'll just go back to a little bit of clean white. If you need to grab some more white, you can. Tap some off onto your paper towel. Just gonna make a little C, backward C shape, C, backward C shape. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of roundness. So C, backward C shape. Just add a little bit of light to those. My yellow looks a little bit more dry now, so I'm gonna go back and give those another coat. Wash and dry my brush. And we just have one more set of flowers that we're gonna do here in a minute, but go ahead and work on all the ones that you have. So four pur uh, purple flowers are gonna be just like our pink flowers where we're just kind of moving our brush round and round. So be sure you are done and give a nice clean brush. I'm gonna grab some purple. You don't have to make your purple lighter so you don't have to take a scoop of white. So we're just gonna grab some purple on our small brush. Be sure that you don't have too much on there. I'm gonna start up here and I'm just gonna go round and round. This one is a little bit smaller than a quarter size, but right here to the top left, between my leaf and my red flower. I'm gonna create another one right here on the line. Be careful if your red, yellow and red are still wet. I'm just gonna go round and round. Again, a little bit smaller than a quarter size. Round and round. A little bit more purple over here. Go round and round. It's kind of right at the tip of that leaf. Make sure you guys can see it, yep. So again, smaller than a quarter size. I'm gonna go round and round. One last one. Right here next to my yellow. Be sure your yellow is not too wet. I'm just gonna go round and round. And once you're done, you don't have to wash your brush. You can just kind of tap some on to your paper towel. I would definitely give my purples a minute or two to dry. But then I'm gonna go back to a nice clean white if you need more white onto your wax paper. You can scoop some more, just be sure your brush is nice and clean. And just like how we did the C and the kind of like the backward C shape, it's a little bit lower down to the right. I'm gonna do the same thing, so C, Backward C, C, backward C. Then I'll just kind of make our flowers look a little bit brighter, huh? There you go. Or you can even add a little bit here and there. A little mini C, backward C's. Just a little bit. We have one more step in our class and that's just adding some dots, which is so super easy. If you're still working on your flowers, take your time. You can even push pause on the video. But once you are done with your flowers, you can take the back of your small brush, which is that perfect circle. So not where the bristles are, but the back of your brush. You can dip it into the white inside the container if you want, like so, just a little bit. You can even tap some off onto your paper if you feel like you got too much a little fuzz on there. So on the top right of the eye, so but in the black area, I'm just gonna 
push it down just a little bit to kind of get the white sparkle in my uh, in the, uh, sloth's eye. And same up here too. So just push it down just a little bit like a stamp. And get those two white bright lights. On the area of the eyes. So one, two, back of my small brush, push down very gently. I also want to add some white dots kind of around my floral, so where like the flowers are. I can just kind of push down with my brush again very gently, like three or four little dots here and there, just to kind of create some fun areas. even create some down here can even create some over here so I'm just making some dots they could be random just don't do too many once you're done you can wipe off the back of your small brush Again, I just made three or four little dots here and there by pushing down on the back of my brush. I do want to have some dots in the centers of my flowers. I can use black. I can use yellow. I'm going to start off with black on the back of my small brush. If you're still working on the other dots, not a problem. But in this yellow one right here, I can just kind of create little dots maybe three maybe do the same thing down here to this yellow one two or three little dots again small brush the back of it with black do the same thing to this yellow up here three little dots right in the center this one too maybe this yellow one as well they just kind of look really good on the yellow flowers a small brush, black paint, two or three dots in the center, just like that. And then I think with my red flowers, I'm going to use yellow. So be sure to wipe off the back of your small brush really well. You don't want that black and the yellow to, to mix. So back of my small brush and for my yellow flowers, excuse me, for my red flowers, I'm going to add yellow. So yellow paint on the back, and I'm gonna find my red flowers and do two or three little dots in each one. I think I'm sticking with three, huh? But if your flowers are a little bit smaller, you can just do two. And just like a stamp, push down. Find those areas. So you're all done with flowers. That was the last step with flowers. We are gonna go back and just kind of fill in the arms or excuse me the hands of our sloth and then our beautiful painting is all together if you're still working on your flowers not a problem but you're going to go back to your small brush and your black paint you don't have to pour it out super super easy i'm just going to paint this hand all black so i'm going to start start with the edges and just going to come in just a little bit where the hand area is so just black don't pass where it kind of comes in. I just wanna add a little bit of black right there. This one up here is a little bit trickier. I'm gonna go on top of this green vine right here with my black paint. I'm gonna make three triangles, one in the middle, a little mini triangle, pointed down. I'm gonna make another mini triangle, pointed down, and my third triangle pointing down and that's pretty much his other hand and you can go ahead and fill in those three triangles with black so you just made a, a black line on top of the green vine and then you made your three pointy triangles and then you can go ahead and fill them in there you go and there you are your super cute sloth painting if you're still working on any of the other steps, take your time. You can go back and touch things up if you need to. Just be aware if a wet color touches another wet color, it's gonna mix. 
so you might want to wait for one color to dry before you get anywhere close to it otherwise you have your blue sky you have your brown white and black sloth and your beautiful um, f colorful flowers and your green vines Thank you artists so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoy your sloth painting. Great job and hopefully we'll see you soon.